mug, then run. Mug, then run. Mug, then run. No! Hello, you've caught me blinded, poisoned, silenced, asleep, slowed, berserked, and confused. I'm fighting a Marlboro in Final Fantasy VIII, a disgusting tentacled abomination that's plagued the series for years with its infamous bad breath attack. Just the sight of that hideous gaping mouth is enough to send even the hardiest of Final Fantasy veterans scurrying for cover under their chocobo feather duvet. But the most galling thing is they're not even bosses. They just appear in the wild, pretending to be regular encounters, so there's just no preparing for it. Give me Ultima Sia, give me Sephiroth, give me that weird floating bull thing from the end of Final Fantasy X. Flippin' it, give me Ozma from Final Fantasy IX. Just don't give me Marlboros. They're too difficult for not bosses. I shouldn't have to feel dread clawing its clammy way down my spine unless I also get to listen to a kick-ass boss theme. I have to farm Marlboro tentacles from these things for various reasons across most iterations of Final Fantasy. Enough with the bad breath. I mean, it's bad, but not even I can compare you to a Marlboro. Anyway, here are seven ridiculously tough enemies, well, six now, that aren't bosses, but should be. Seriously though, have you been eating worms again? Next up, we've got regenerators from Resident Evil 4, which at first don't seem particularly troublesome, do they? Here's one now. It's a bit bigger than a human and is grey and horrible, but doesn't really seem any worse than what I faced already. There, yeah, got him. Okay. Got him. Got him, please tell me I got him. <laughs> we all remember our first encounter with the regenerators of Resident Evil 4, don't we? An initial indifference that spikes violently into abject panic as you try desperately to find the exit while listening to those horrible snuffling noises they make. Finding yourself in a walk-in freezer with a bunch of them hanging from the ceiling in bags. Just saving them for later, I guess. Only to discover that to progress you have to turn the freezer off, which means, yes, they thaw out and fall down and get their legs shot off and wriggle about on the floor and oh, they should be bosses. Wait, not they, it. There should be one and it should be a boss and even then it would be one too many. Our next entry is the Handyman from Bioshock Infinite, or Handymen, not sure what the official plural is. Maybe I'll just go with Big Metal Douchebags. Yes, that sounds good. I'll update the official Bioshock wiki with that later. Anyway, the Handyman was created as a sort of mobile medipod for sick and injured people, enabling them to live normal lives encased in 20 feet of rampaging steel. But this is Bioshock, isn't it? And so, much like the cities of Rapture and Columbia, outwardly good intentions hide a twisted reality. That being, the humans encased within the big metal douchebags are in constant pain, never able to sleep, and have their hearts lovingly displayed in an easily shootable liquid vial on their chest. But whatever, my compassion for these things ran out the first time one smashed my face in while I was minding my own business, you know, just casually shooting some Vox Populi riding about on the sky rail. They are ridiculously strong, and fast, and aggressive. At least the big daddies left you alone if you ignored them, not the handymen, however, no. They want you to suffer as much as they are. Well, Mr. Handyman, you've succeeded. Congratulations, you're one of those enemies that make my stomach instantly feel like it's full of liquid panic as soon as you appear. Go away and be a boss or something. Next, Honey Badgers, Far Cry 4. Don't even think about making that stupid joke again. Look at these bloody things, look how much damage they can take, and they just don't care. They just don't care. I don't even need to explain this one, just watch, watch this. Don't worry, it's probably still alive. See, there it is, told you. 
Next up, you know in Uncharted when you get near the end and the enemies start wearing body armour and hauling miniguns about and generally just making you wish for the good times of pretty jungles full of bad men in flimsy t-shirts? Well, we're talking about the bit after that, you know, the bit where the supernatural nasties start showing up. Like the Yetis from Uncharted 2 that <laughs> lol turn out to be not Yetis of course because Yetis aren't real but are in fact giant blue men in Yeti suits. What? Our next entry, however, is not the Guardians of Shambhala, but the cursed Spanish pirates from Uncharted Drake's Fortune. Oh, I still remember when they first showed up. God, it was terrifying. Everything up until that point had been nice, friendly cover shooting. Now you were faced with crazed undead pirates that didn't care about being shot. All they wanted to do was run at you really, really fast while screaming. There's that bit, isn't there, where you have to fight off loads of them with Eddie Raja while Elena takes forever to throw you down a rope. Man, this bit was tough. I spent the last hour or so of Drake's Fortune dreading what was around the next corner because most of the time it was hordes of these. Where are the minigun guys or the armoured snipers? Please, just give me some armoured snipers. Look at this lovely game. It's Dark Chronicle if you were confused, or Dark Cloud 2 if you're still confused, and basically it's brilliant. A deep and varied role player with excellent characters and serene music. Another great thing about Dark Chronicle is that if you run into something hard, you just get your ride pod out. Your ride pod is called Steve, here he is, and he guns down everything too big for Max's spanner. Until of course you find yourself in a level with a red seal that locks Max out of the game and have to take down everything with Monica's magic armband. Yes, she has a sword too, but against our sixth entry, the massive rock golems, using a sword is about as effective as using a toothbrush in a fight against a wall. They just don't care, golems. They just keep walking forwards, slowly, and it doesn't take many hits to get them enraged either. You have to be incredibly careful, pulling them into areas where you're sure there aren't any other enemies, chipping away at their health with magic, and making absolutely sure you don't go anywhere near them because... It's not like you can just avoid them either, because sod's law, it's always one of them that's got the key to the next level. Tips for survival? Play like a coward and stock up on bread. Lots and lots of lovely, life-affirming bread. Now, final entry, and obviously I had to include something from Soulsborne. There was lots of competition. You've got the shark giants in Bloodborne. Yep. There's the bone wheel skeletons in Dark Souls. But we're going for the giant depraved ones in Demon Souls. Yes, way back in the series' infancy when the creeping terror of slowly prodding your way through a Souls game was still new to everyone, these things just took the biscuit. Deep in the Valley of Defilement you'll find them, hunched, mutated, moly things with clubs that like to attack while you're knee-deep in sludge and therefore unable to dodge. Even compared to everything that had come before. The giant depraved ones were just that little bit further along the oh my god what now oh scale. You have to pull them into a place where you have the advantage, i.e. the tiny bits of dry land poking intermittently throughout the swamp. You have to fight them one at a time, you have to wait for the swing and duck underneath it, fail to do any one of these things, and it's hello game over. I mean, compare them to these things from Bloodborne and you could argue the giant depraved ones have lost a bit of their fear factor, but they're the original classic terror-inducing non-boss. If it weren't for them, shark giants might not even exist, and wouldn't that be a shame? Well, there we go, seven ridiculously tough enemies that aren't bosses but should be. Let us know in the comments if you can think of any more. Like this video or I'll cry. And please do subscribe if you haven't yet for more of these videos every Friday. Thanks for watching.